everybody, Jaws Jr. here for a new adventure. I don't know if I would call this an adventure or not. It could be, it might end out that way. But, in the last video, we were at watching a cattle drive with the cowboys and the cowgirl, riding the America's first form of individual transportation, the horse. So we're going from that to the cutting edge form of tra individual transportation, the Tesla Model 3. My boss Aaron has just picked one up, as you can see here. He got it just a few days ago, and he's willing to talk about it and take us for a ride. So what we're going to do here is that we're going to we're here with the, with the owner Aaron, and he's going to tell us about why he got it and um, do a. You've seen already some of the exterior. We're going to look, have you guys look at the interior. Go for All it. All right. So new owner of Model Three got it on Saturday. It is now what, what day is it? Wednesday. So I've had it less than a week. Uh, as you can tell, it's already gotten a little dirty. Um, the uh, first impressions of the car, I, I love it. Okay, I love it. We'll go over the, there are negatives. We will go over the negatives, but right now, I am still in a, in a love affair with this car. Um, I, I got it because uh, um, I, liked, I liked the fact that I wanted an electric car, but I also wanted it, I wanted the, I have an ego, okay? I wanted it for the ego reason too, I'll, I'll admit it. So, uh, so that's why I got it. And uh, so let's go ahead, we can, kind of weird, to get into the car. I think that I've never seen the, um, uh, I've never driven a um, Model S. I think they're automatic, they automatically pop out. But for this one, you push in, you gotta, it's kind of annoying for some people. You gotta push in to pull the handle out. And the handle comes out, here's the interior. What the most ironic thing is, is that there's no dash in front of the driver. Everything is controlled through the panel right here. Through this basically looks like an oversized tablet. Yeah. Now, so let's let's talk about that. Kind of annoying. I mean, it's, it's fine, but they wanted to go with the minimalist approach, and I get that. They wanted to be all artistic and stuff like that. But here, you want to open this glove compartment box here? Here are the steps. You go to the driver thing here, controls, oh, here. On here. Oh yeah. Then you get to the glove part box here. There you go. That's how you open the glove box. Okay. Rather than just having a button right there to open the glove box. Okay. I mean, sometimes you can take the minimalist. My point is you can take the minimalist approach too far. Okay. Open the car door, for example. Okay. So we look right over here, and you know, if he wanted to get out, he'd have to push that button there. Okay. And then he could get out. Okay, it's fine, but I mean, it's not intuitive for car users. You know, they, they're, they're trying to figure out how to get out. They can't figure out how to get out. Uh, I don't have a key for this car. Uh, everything is controlled through my phone. I, they also gave me a little card, a little card that I can also use as a key, and I, I keep it with me um, just, to, just to make sure. Where is it here? There it is. Just to, just to make sure in case, in case I do something stupid like run over my phone or something like that um, and I won't be stranded so I keep it in my wallet alrighty where's Lamar don't crash into the Subarus behind us and down yes and he replaced he re his previous car was a Subaru Outback Sport which was basically the Impreza Impreza uh, 
impress the hatchback. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So we're driving along here. If I start getting too close to uh, other, oh, one thing that's interesting is ride the yellow line too. Yeah, it doesn't mind if I want ride ride the yellow line. Okay. Uh, so it does not have lane departure. You know, it it has a. If you get all the cameras, it has a self-driving feature, so it probably does have some sort of lane departure, but uh, I have not, I've only had the car for a week. Okay, so it has, one of the things with the Tesla that they like to make a big deal of it, it has really good acceleration. If I, you can see, we can. And you've seen how quick we went to 50 miles an hour. Yeah, so it has very, very good acceleration. Uh, I thought that would be a real selling point. I'll be, well, it was a selling point. It was one of the reasons I got the car. To be honest with you, it's not that... The, 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 it's more of the smooth drive is far more important than the acceleration. Um, the acceleration, it, it doesn't have the... Uh, when, you, when you drive a, a, a vehicle that has really good acceleration, a gas-powered vehicle, it has that, that rumble. And, uh, uh, and it just, that rumble just feels so good and it gathers its energy and it goes. This just goes. And you'd think that that would be more satisfying, but actually I'll tell you, I think it's less satisfying. But, so the acceler, I, I love the car, uh, but the acceleration isn't really a huge, huge factor. Uh, one of the things I heard about Tesla is it doesn't do well uphill. We're going uphill right now, it does fine uphill, okay? The charging of it, you know, not having to pay for gas. That was one. I, I drive a lot of miles. My um, 2009 Subaru had 180,000 miles on it. Um, so the gas savings was a, was significant for me um, uh, in terms of it. And so, first of all, I've on I've been on the waiting list since 2016. So it took a long time to get this vehicle. Okay. Then the time came that when when they you know it kept on delaying the delivery, delaying the delivery. I wanted the all all wheel drive version that delayed the delivery. When it finally came time that they were ready to deliver the vehicle, boom! It was like you got two weeks. It's coming. Okay. Didn't have a home charger set up. Didn't have anything set up. Okay. Get the car. It had 190 um, uh, 190 miles charge on it. Drove it around for a while. Um, and then when I when I plug in, I just plugged it in last last evening. Regular charge. I can get about good eight to nine hours. I can get about forty to fifty mile charge. Well, for me driving down to Salem, that's not going to cut it too long. Um, so uh, um, so my point is is that you really need the if you're driving a, a significant distance, you really need the uh, the Tesla charging unit at home. Uh, they have the supercharging stations. The closest ones to me are about, I don't know. About 20 miles? Yeah, about 20 miles away. And how much does that cost? Now, uh, it costs me uh, um, 24 cents per, um, I think it was 24 cents per kilowatt hour. Okay. Uh, I don't know how that translates. There's actually a, a, a savings back in here. Um, that talks about what the savings are on that. And so that'll kind of tell you what the savings are. Um, to get a full charge, even at the charging station. So it's 29 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. Yeah. And, and I, I, I want at the supercharging station, I pay 24 uh, cents per, per um, uh, kilowatt. kilowatt hour. Okay. Uh, I think I started at like 150 miles and uh, um, got to, uh, let's see, I think it was 230 miles. So about 80 miles, that took me about 40 minutes, 40 to 45 minutes at a supercharging station. So, um, you know, it's not, it, it's a time investment even if you go on the supercharging station. The best way to go, obviously, is the, um, uh, if you have the home charger, which I will be getting the home charger. I just, I, I was, like I said, all this kind of stuff caught me unaware. Home charger's $500, then you have whatever installation fees there are. So one of the negatives though is you'd be unable to, to drive it from Portland, Oregon to Pendleton, Oregon and back without having to stop and charge somewhere. Yeah. And, and then since you're in a remote area of Oregon, 
there may not be a charging station. Yeah, I have not used this feature yet, but if I plug in, like if I, if I say I want to go to Pendleton, Oregon, okay, um, uh, and actually we can, maybe you can type in Pendleton, Oregon in there, it will tell me where I need to stop. Um, there you go, Pendleton, Oregon, right up there. Go ahead and hit it. Okay. And then it will tell me, okay, those red dots over there, those are the charging stations. And then it will start plotting, you can see it's plotting out the trip. It wants me to stop in uh, Woodburn, for example, because that's a supercharging station. That's the first stop. And um, it's gonna have me charge for an hour in Woodburn. Uh, and it says it'll get me to Pendleton with a 9% battery charge, okay? So, the question is, is that if I was in Pendleton, Oregon, would 9% be enough to uh, um, get me where to get me to the next charging station? Um, and you can, you know, you can either plug it in if you're going to visit a friend. You can plug it into your friend's house, and but that that probably wouldn't be a very good solution. You probably would have to hit a couple of supercharging stations along the way. So um, uh, yeah, and you can see the total trip is four hours and 55 minutes. Um, that includes an hour at a charging station, okay? So that's, Tesla owners have to accept that they're gonna, the car, their car is gonna tell them where they're gonna be stopping for lunch. Um, and that's, that's just the reality. I mean, there's, there, there's no way around it, you know? Um, but so, but for a commuter car, you can't really go wrong. Commuter car works great. And, and I, when I was at the Tesla charging station, of course, I met a bunch of other Tesla uh, owners also at the charging station, and uh, you push this little button, by the way, to go into park. Um, and they were telling me that 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 they, some of them had owned it since 2013. They said they've taken road trips, uh, gone to California, gone all over the place, and they say there are charging stations. But again, uh, it's you, it, it's got to be. It isn't just get in the car and go like with a gas-powered vehicle. We're not there yet. Now, can you stop at third-party charging stations? Yeah, except for the, the wait times. It's just kind of like the home charger. The wait time is going to be Quite long. long. It's going to be long. It, it, it takes it takes a while. And I've never tried a home char uh, the other charging stations, but from what I've seen online, the superchargers are, are, are the way to go. Now, the other thing, too, is um, if I was going... It also would tell me, if it was a long trip, it would tell me which hotels have charging stations and uh, um, and then, you know, tell me, hey, you should stop at this hotel um, and charge up over the evening in there. So there are a lot of hotels and restaurants and stuff like that have charging stations uh, that are basically supercharging stations. They'll they'll charge you up quick, but they, they um, uh, yeah, you, you're going to have to... To stay there a while. Frunk. The store stuff here. I have rehab equipment, my uniform for martial arts, yoga mat, that kind of thing. Cool. That's where I got that. Uh, and the trunk. Big trunk. Yeah. This is a different adventure, but we went from horses yesterday in the last video to this new 2018 Tesla Model S. So for now, everybody, just remember, everyone's life is an adventure. Then there's mine, new technology compared to the old. This is the Adventures of Jaws Jr. Have a good one, everybody. See ya!